Counting double digit thousand sacks. <laughs> Hey guys, we are back again with another video and in this video we will be talking about subwoofers. Now, there's all kinds of different types of subwoofers. There's small ones and there's large ones and there's some that are square and some that are circular. Yet, with every subwoofer out there, whether big, small, square, circular, there's one question that every audio enthusiast has and that is, do subwoofers need to be broken in? Now you can go across forums, you can talk to people, and everyone will have a different opinion on whether or not a subwoofer actually needs to be broken in. Now I could sit here and tell you my opinion for the next 10 minutes, but let's be honest, you don't really care, and it's just another opinion. So instead of giving you an opinion, what I wanna do is scientifically come to a conclusion on whether or not subwoofers need to be broken in, and if they do, when do they need to be broken in? And if they don't, why don't they need to be broken in? So, in order to do that, we need some type of measurement tool. And for that, we're gonna be using this. This is DATS V2. This is, a this is a speaker measurement system that comes from Parts Express. It is a very great system, and it's really, really important to have if you build speakers. Uh, and this can actually give us quite a big insight on whether or not we need to break in our woofers. And so we'll be using this to scientifically prove whether or not we actually need to worry about breaking in our subwoofers and maybe even put an end to the age old internet battle of whether or not I actually need to break in my subwoofers. Now, for this, we need a subwoofer and luckily we have one we have this GRS-10SW-4. Now this is a 10 inch model by GRS uh, four ohm subwoofer that has never been played yet. This, I, it was actually purchased from Parts Express. It is actually a budget subwoofer, um, which costs about $20, okay? So this is gonna be our model. Now, it really won't matter if it's this budget model or even this Clip Sub 12. Unfortunately, both the Titan and the Sub 12 have, have both been played extensively and so therefore have been broken in. And so this will be our test subject. Now this has never been played and so we this is the perfect subject for this. Now, I know you're very interested to keep hearing me talking and, and uh, you'd like me to talk about subwoofers forever, but, but let's be honest. This debate has lasted long enough, so let's get testing. Now that the testing is complete, we need to break in the subwoofer. That means it's time for some slow-mo excursion. We're going to break this subwoofer in free air, which means that we're going to suspend it above the ground and we're going to do this by just using uh, some scrap wood and putting it between a couple chairs. Now make sure to screw it in, that way it doesn't fall out. And then hook it up to an amplifier and we are going to be playing 20 to 50 hertz sweep and we'll be doing that for at least 12 hours. So just turn it on and go ahead and leave. That way it can break in. Alright guys, Woofer played for about 12 hours last night and now we're going to hook it up with DATS and run the test again and see if there is any difference at all in the TS specs. Alright guys, we have all the data input into WinISD, both the before and after, and you can see that it is quite a massive difference. Now it's not just a massive difference because of the graph, which we're going to go over in a minute, but it's also a massive difference between the optimal box size. 
So before we had th this graph that shows a huge hump that goes from 300 all the way to 70 hertz and the box size is completely different than post break. Now after we've broken the woofer, then you can see it's a much linear response and gives us a completely different optimal box size. So let's go over these results and why you would want to break in a subwoofer. So when do you need to break in a subwoofer? Well, if you're going to be in some type of competition, you need to break in the subwoofer because you're not going to get the response that you think you should get until you've broken it in. You also need to break it in before you design and build a box for a subwoofer. So if you're starting from scratch and you're saying, okay, I want to know what will give me the best response. Well, you need to break in the subwoofer first. Otherwise, your TS specs that you get the first time will be way off. and It'll show you a box either usually much larger than you actually need to build. So make sure to break it in at that point in time. Now, if you're just a casual listener and casual movie watcher, then you may not need to break it in right away. However, think about what's actually happening. So why did the TS specs change after we broke it in? Well, think about it like a guy who has never stretched before. If you've never stretched before, you're not going to be very flexible. And that's really what happens with these woofers. And in particular, this GRS woofer, this is the voice, the voice coils down inside here. And if you see, it flexes in and out as you push in on the voice coil. Now, what that means is that this voice coil has never been worked before. So it's never been stretched out. And because of that, it can't give you full excursion or it can't go out as much as it should yet. And uh, that's going to be problematic, especially if you want to get the highest SPL out of that. You're not going to get it right away. So you can't overwork it. You need to kind of break it in a little in order to get that high X max. So by now, hopefully you'll understand why someone would say that their subwoofer actually sounds better the longer they listen to it. That's all because of break-in and how the frequency response actually changes because of break-in. Now, hopefully you've learned when you need to break in your subwoofer and when you don't need to worry about it and why you might need to break it in and the concepts behind breaking it in. So for those that say that you need to break in a subwoofer, yeah, there's certain times where that's absolutely true. And for those that say you don't need to worry about it, well, there's also times where that may be true as well. So guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and let me tell you about two other channels that you may like for those that you are speaker builders. I'm going to go ahead and leave them in the link in the description. One is for Jason who builds speakers, and one is also for Impulse Audio who also test speakers and build speakers. So any of you guys that are in speaker building would love those channels and just go ahead and, and take a look at their channels. I think you'd really enjoy them. Thanks guys. Have a great day. Counting double digit thousand.